What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 4 in the Frosty Pack, Episode 2. Now you can see that we have some installation around the house, we did that in the last episode, and then we've got some farms going too. This uh, additional mod pack actually turns out to be a bit more complex than I thought, because originally I assumed that it was going to be a very cold environment and you had to work on making it warm for your guys. And then a lot of the other things remain cold and as such. But it turns out, from what I've been playing anyway, that it just actually warm up quite quick. So warming up the area is quite easy. Before you know it, you're actually warming up things that you don't want to warm up. And then you've got other problems. I mean, building your base out of snow, that's expected. Although snow is a very good insulator, as it works with igloos, uh, it does appear that... Um, Maybe having four fires going is a bit overkill. I don't believe we need one in the toilets, in the bathroom, toilets, water closet, whatever you call it, where you're from. Um, but I did that just in case. We obviously need one in the bedrooms, otherwise they can't sleep. And now just breaking open some tiles to allow for transfer of gases. We don't have the gas tiles yet. So we'll just have to leave a gap there, which works. They could jump over one tile, it's not a problem, or one tile gaps. Struggling for oxygen in the base, the quickest solution for me is to collect all of the oxalite and make sure that it is within our base that is sealed, or it should be sealed, and then put them into these two containers there. One is more than enough, but it wasn't centered. So putting them in there, they will have, of course sublimate off and gas out into the base, filling it up with oxygen. Any oxygen then being converted into carbon dioxide by the duplicants, and I haven't capped off the top properly, so I am an idiot, but I will do. Um, will fall to the bottom of the base where the aloe vera plants are. They will then convert that back into oxalite and rinse and repeat. I'm pretty sure that the energy consumed and used is more than the energy provided. In terms of the amount of carbon dioxide it uses, gives you less oxygen. Um, because conservation of energy says that it has to. Though it is a game, so I could be wrong. But we'll have to wait and see. For now, I'm not too worried. There is plenty of oxalite about. I just need to make sure as soon as I uncover it, wherever I uncover it from, that I'm bringing it into the base and storing it so that... The oxygen is going into our base and not being wasted elsewhere. Of course, we can use pipes to bring it from elsewhere if we need to. But one thing I'm finding is digging in the snow, because it falls down, you open up ginormous cavities that are a waste of space. So they hold all of the gas and you can't really get to it because it's such a low pressure, because it's such a large area. So capping your base as soon as possible is the preference. For me now, playing that you can see it's not capped, that's bad. The bottom shouldn't be capped. You want that carbon dioxide to get to your plants. The top, you need to put an airlock there as soon as you can. So if you are playing along, and I appreciate, you're probably way ahead of me by now, but if you are playing along um, the top of your base, make sure you cap it so that that oxygen can't escape and go places you don't want it. And of course, these aloe vera, aloe vera plants work very well, but you need to make sure they are, of course, in the carbon dioxide. You can see clearly visibly on the screen there, the black below and the blue above. So they need to be dropped down a level. So doing so will allow them to actually convert that carbon dioxide into the oxalite that we need. Of course, in the future, you're probably gonna have a lot more carbon dioxide than what we've got now. And, you, and unless you use scrubbers or a, a, um, or the means that we've already already seen in the past. These are so far certainly the best plants from previous uh, plants, patches, etc. That do actually convert that oxygen over from the carbon dioxide, of course, into oxalite, which is an additional product to manipulate because if you store it in the wrong place, you're wasting it. Now, with mods, you can make it easy. There are what they call concealed or contained, I can't remember. Sealed, yeah. Sealed storage boxes, but I think they're actually quite late game. They need plastic and steel, if I'm not mistaken. Certainly plastic, so probably not the best option. But yeah, you can see now it is working. The oxygen is starting to push its way up. The dark blue is still oxygen, so don't panic. It's just 
low pressure. Opening up the bottom as well to try and help collect any carbon dioxide that I do have. But the only way to increase the amount of carbon dioxide is of course to increase the amount of duplicants. But increasing the amount of duplicants also means increasing food, water, beds, toiletries, etc. Um, and I'm not convinced that we want to rush with that at the minute. Now this is the lab base, the lab map, as we played in the previous. Just jumping over now, you can see we've got the insulation in, as I said. And then that is an airtight, no, watertight water basin to put any liquids that we get. It's supposed to be for any polluted water so that we can get rid of it and not leave it in the base. I've done one in the base for, what was it for? The one below is for water. I'm planning ahead there. I've not actually got anywhere near that yet because the temperatures are too cold. So even when we get water, it just freezes anyway. So it's just planning ahead. Now right over here, and this is where you can see this huge hole was just where I had to dig out snow. And it just continues to fall over and over and over until it's all gone. Cement mixer, because I'd never seen that before and wanted to see what it was like. And then we've got some other items. Now, I've put them over here way out of the way because I know that they throw off a lot of heat and I don't want to melt my base. Over to the far left is some ethanol uh, that we'll look at shortly. And, of course, the ethanol is going to be required for crops in the future. I think it's for the plums, are they called? Or beetroots? I can't remember. I think they're plums. So you can see it there. So these mammoth looking cow things yeah there's the plums that they eat so to you get obviously the fibers from them like you get from the reed fibers and we did it previously with the drecos they're the same you get a lot more though um, but they need to eat that crop that is next to them the beetroot looking plums and the beetroot looking plums require to be at a certain temperature obviously but also they require liquid of the ethanol, which means you have to use the hydroponic farm plots. You can't get away with those that we're using currently. The foxes eat the pineapples. And yes, I know the names are slightly different. But, you know, by now, if you're watching my videos, you've learned that I just... I've got to change some it, right? Um, yeah, so they eat the, the pineapple spiky things. We can too, and we will be, but the one thing I've noticed is the temperature differential. So it, ha it has to be quite cold to grow the pineapples, and the foxes don't like being too cold. <laughs> so what we actually figure out, or what I figure out, is you have to grow them elsewhere and then take them to them in the feeders. Checking out some of the research and making sure that we're going for the bathrooms and the various different utilities. Now, normally I would rush the proper plumbed bathrooms, but there's not much point doing that with the situation that we don't actually have any fluids. Um, and if we do get it up and running, you need to be careful where the pipes go because, of course, if you pipe liquids and it's still cold, they'll freeze in the pipe and then break everything. So that isn't my current rushing point my current rush is for the critters as always and food and comfortability and the base is looking much better at the minute and you can see down there at the bottom a massive farm of aloe vera plants converting that carbon dioxide that we are of course creating filters down through the base through all of those vents is converted into oxalite that then gets put into that thing I've got there you can see the storage bin I've got there that I've just alerted to to make sure I'm not missing any and then that sublimates into the base and of course voila I have removed the fires in the bathrooms as well if you've noticed good on you if you did mainly because it was getting a bit too warm uh, the bathrooms and bedrooms got to like 40 degrees um, and I need to be able to control it a bit better than that because there are things that need to be cold there are things that need to be warm and I don't have the space to segregate them too differently. And as yet, I haven't got the insulation tiles that I am used to. So we are now ready to get the mammoths 
And of course, we need to make sure we've got the food to go with that. Very small ranch for now, but we will sort that out moving forward to make sure they're not cramped. We don't have the mods where it allows us to kind of break the game with the amount of critters in a room. So we do have to follow its rules. Likely going to be six or eight with a maximum room size, but we're going to have to do a few base extensions before we get away with doing so. Now these new crystal looking things are a part of the patch as well. And you can polish them into a polished crystal as you can see there and then use it as an ornament. It increases the decor massively but it also gives off some light as well which is quite nice. Always nice to have some extra things to collect. Just looking at the base there you can see as well full of oxygen at the bottom there was red and the aloe vera farm is working nicely to convert all of that carbon dioxide into oxalite. And there you go, the first mammoth has been sheared and now it's got a very bold, very bold back. But that gives us a crap ton of reed fibre, which means we can start with the clothing, like the warm clothing from the beginning. Obviously the foxes now are giving us the, the, the wound that we need for heating. You can use it for building as well, of course, but I'm trying not to. Now, the Bamoth to grow back will need to be fed and looked after properly, which means we need to get this liquid ethanol into some hydroponic farms and the plums. Then we should be happy to go. Like the Lumen Quartz is the name of it originally. You then ask them to polish that. They then chip it away at it, polish it into a Lumen's Quartz. They look very cold, but they'll do it. And I think just... Wow, that was fast. Carb Lewis Quartz then into the base. Along with the other one, you can see there, is giving off light, beauty, decor, etc. Got some of the sconces as well that are pushing the oxalite into oxygen. I, I can't see that they're any better. They look nicer. And they're more convenient. Maybe if you store your oxalite in, a, in an area where they don't sublimate and gas off, um, that's a better way of controlling it. For now, though, they both seem to work. Now, I am obviously trying to restrict access to these areas. As I'm opening up areas, I need to chuck these walls and doors in to stop the gases from just dissipating into the abyss. We're, at, we're digging up a lot more than I want to. We're uncovering a l much larger areas than I need to because of the snow. And that's meaning that the gases are dramatically reduced. Now digging through over here, this is normally a warm biome, but of course in this it's not. But there is obsidian there and a few other materials, all of which can be used to build tiles and stuff in the future. And that is what I am after because we need to stop using wood and snow. So if I dig out this biome, like so, that will mean that we are able to use them materials instead. And we should be more like the original game where you used like sedimentary rock and things like that and you don't ever run out of materials where you're building ladders. All of it's freezing still, of course. Apart from the Bamas kick out a lot of heat. And there's another one ready to be captured in the future. They also drop pates, by the way, which is basically cow shit. Um, you can convert that using the... And for reference, there is one. Very pink. Very pink. Um, pate. Uh, turd. Yeah. And I suppose it makes sense, right? The food that it's eating are purple plums, pink plums. So, yeah, it makes sense. But in itself, it is a resource. So, don't throw them away and make sure you do convert them. And of course, in preparation for feeding the Bamoths, furry cows, woolly mammoths, many, many names, but yeah, Bamoths, um, I do need to put in a liquid pipe to get the ethanol over to the hydroponic farms. And this is a couple of new items, actually. This is a water tank, which is quite cool, or a liquid tank, I'd say, small ones. Um, and they also have smaller pumps as well, which is quite cool. So I'm going to try those out. But we also need to get power over there, so a lot of power cable, a lot of piping, and then a pump. And 
we should be good to go. Luckily, the crops don't usually require much liquid, so once it's filled up the line, it should be quite competent to continue by itself for a decent amount of time. Even if the power runs out, if the line is already prepped and it has somewhere to go, it will, of course, drain. So all you need to do is get some in the pipe, and then the, the limited electricity that we do have, because we only have one generator, running wheel, and two batteries. We could be a lot better off than that. I don't know. That the, You saw me circle that there. I keep getting random bits of floor disappear. I don't know why. I've not done anything. I've not changed anything. I'm not aware that I told it to do that, but I could have done. Who knows? So jumping forward a bit, you can see everything down at the bottom struggling because we are full. We are full on oxygen. We have no carbon dioxide or not enough to keep those farms running, but it doesn't matter. They stay there until the point that they do have enough. On the left hand side, we've got now a ladder going down as well. This is where I'm going to start building some of the new farms and the critter ranchers to give them a lot more room because we are starting to have issues with temperatures. You can see that I'm just lining up to make sure it kind of matches. But it's basically getting too warm for the pineapples to grow or pike apples. So we need to have a better area to control. And while I'm at it, I might as well max out, which is 96 tiles, max out the size of the farms to give them as much space as possible, which should allow me to have eight critters. It usually is eight in most cases. Some of them require six, some of the bigger ones in vanilla. Um, these are unknown. I expect the foxes will probably be eight. Maybe the mammoths will be six. We'll have to wait and see on their moods. Uh, as we build them but as you can see the, it, there is a barrier between of like what is that 10 tiles i've done that on purpose to make sure that heat transfer between this area and the base area is very limited because all of that is in the way once i get a better scope of how quick things increase or decrease i will of course adjust to to, to, to match that so the guys coming over and they seem happy enough And jumping forward ever so slightly more, this is what I'm looking to try and do. Huge amount of crops to grow as well. We have the seeds for the pineapple type things, so I want to make sure that they are growing because we're going to be eating them too. Now, there is a decent amount of carbon dioxide in there at the minute because there was a lot of liquid carbon dioxide that has gassed off, which I'm hoping is a good thing. Over here, you can see I've just opened up that base because there was moaning about not enough room. So I have just opened that tile in the middle there, which makes the top count even though they can't get there. But this is just so that I can give them a bit of time to continue to grow while I sort out a proper solution. And I say proper solution. It is air quotes. Remember, this is the first time playing through for me. I don't play betas or anything because I like to play the game as it's intended, not get a sneak peek. And then I decided against it simply because the area over there where it's cooler for the crops to grow is too cold for the foxes. So I've just extended the size of the ranch here. The one above can be binned. And then what I'm gonna do instead, on the right-hand side of the base, I'm just gonna build that whole right-hand side out to that size. So it will be 96 tiles worth per floor and then that will give me 96 tiles for every room i like to keep everything i say symmetrical it's probably going to be small rooms on the left hand side large rooms on the right hand side we'll see but for now it is we with where we have got to so we do have two farms we have the crops growing albeit they've not finished yet and at the stage that they do start to fill up and be mature uh, that is when the bamath should start to increase as well and we start getting eggs and yes both of them do still lay eggs for now though we are at time so i am going to end the episode here thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always don't forget to comment and let me know of any tricks tips that i don't know and let me know of anything if you want to see me try it again thank you for watching take care goodbye